and welcome back to the Teeniest Pinecone. It's Jess, back again with another plan with me. We are here for the mid-year brand new bullet journal plan with me, and I'm really excited. We're sticking with scribble and dot, but this time I am in the gray faux leather with the golden embossed sloth, and I think it's super adorable. So we're starting our spread on the nameplate page and I'm just drawing a group of rowan leaves with a fine liner and then coloring them in with a light warm gray Tombow brush pen. If you've read the Throne of Glass series, you'll know there's a character named Rowan. I just finished the series like a month ago, so the name has been pretty etched into my brain at this point. But I also knew Rowan was a type of tree and realized I had no idea what it looked like, so I went to Google, as one does. And not only did I think it was beautiful with its um, long leaves and, you know, red tinted berries, but I learned quite a few fun facts about it too. One of them being that in Scotland, people would plant rowan trees in front of gates or front doors to ward off witches and evil spirits. Which reminded me of the magical variety of rowan tree from Harry Potter called the Wigan tree, used for wand making. Which was in fact the wand that I was paired with when I went to Harry Potter World at Universal. But magical wood aside, we have come to my grid spacing guide. This has come a long way over the course of the last two bullet journals that I've had. I've made enough spreads at this point to know what I usually use and go back to reference. So after writing in the numbers of each space, uh, vertically and horizontally, I've just gone in with a different color Tombow for every little section that I know I'm going to make on this page. I've broken it into halves, thirds, and quarters, and left myself a guide for when I know I'm going to fit an entire month on one page. And after filling in the rowan leaves with that same warm gray color, we are moving on to the next spread, which is in lieu of a quote page for this one, a 2022 themes spread, which I didn't do in my January to June bullet journal, but I thought this was a really cute idea. I'd never done it before and just kind of wanted to try something new. So while it looks naked right now, at the end in every box will be a little preview of the theme with the name of the month and where you can find it. Moving on to the future log. Not much to explain here. It's a future log. I've drawn a couple row and branches on either side of the header. And now I'm just drawing several clusters of these little berries that are common on rowan trees. And using the fine tip of those same colored Tombow brush pens to write in the names of the month. I know that for a lot of people, writing in the mini calendars can be an irksome process, but I think for me, I look forward to doing them every single spread. I think it's something about how uniform they look and being the one to enact that uniformity does something to my brain that I really enjoy. This next spread is my goals and content ideas spread. I'm really hoping to utilize this more in the back half of the year. Um, and create more of a schedule, not only for these videos, but for content just on social media in general. I do have the same spread in my January to June bullet journal, but it's not as catered to the specific channel, so I'm breaking them up into YouTube and Instagram columns for now, and we'll see where that takes us. Next is my things to try or check these out dude spread. I've got TV shows, movies, webtoons, and artist categories, and the bottom will be where my favorites from this next six months will go. Here is my period tracker, and you'll see as I start to write the correct year, um, I end up writing 2020. Because look, let's be honest, it's basically just been a very long 2020. 
but it was an easy fix by cutting a small piece of the same grid paper and just covering it up. Although the piece I did use was from an Archer and Olive notebook, which is a slightly warmer tone than the Scribble and Dot, but I don't think it's very noticeable. I have also drawn the phases of the moon as they have been linked to menstrual cycles in the past. They're not by any means, but I will use any excuse to draw a celestial body. I started implementing this because I have really irregular periods. I could go four months without one and think nothing of it, so I want to see if there's any correlation between when that happens and the time of year or the kind of symptoms that I'm having. And the final spread is Life in Polaroids, which I took from Amanda Rachley. I thought it was the cutest idea. I don't know if it originated with her, but that's where I saw it. And if you're not familiar, you essentially just take a highlight or a favorite moment from every month and put a picture in its place. I have an Instax mini film printer, so thankfully I don't have to carry a camera around with me everywhere I go. I can just take the pictures from my phone whenever I'm ready and print them directly onto a blank piece of Polaroid film. And we are finishing it out with a couple more Rowan branches, some berries, and using that same warm gray Tombow brush pen to fill in the leaves. And now we've arrived at the final flip through for the mid-year mark. I hope you enjoyed it. July will be out very soon. And as always, all the supply links will be linked down in the description along with my Instagram. See you in the next one.